Hi, I'm Mikey Jeanson, a gameplay programmer with a background in Unreal Engine and C++. I've helped make several games, including Your Average Bear, but now I'm a full-time UEFN developer, and this is Verse Boost. Welcome to the project everybody. Today we are going to be going over how to make a custom event in your game that you can subscribe to, you can await, and you can also cancel your subscription. So let's jump into the code. First things first, we have this simple system here for a quest. Basically all it does is just check if when you enter this volume that we have here, if you have an apple or not. And if you do have an apple, then it will signal that the quest is completed. This quest completed event is actually using the event class that is made by Epic, but you'll see that this only allows you to await and you can signal it as well, but you cannot subscribe to it. What we want to make is a listenable. You might have seen this in a lot of events on a lot of devices that there's a type listenable. Basically, this means that you can await it and you subs can subscribe. If we take a look at subscribe, Basically, you pass the callback function, what you want it to call when that event happens, and then it will pass you the cancelable, and this is the interface that allows you to cancel your subscription to that function, or to that event, I should say. So you'll notice here that we signal the event here, and we are actually awaiting it in our quest manager device. And here we are going to wait on every agent to complete the quest, and then when they do, we are going to pretend to unlock a new quest. So let's see that in action. So here, if I run in here and don't have the apple, you see it doesn't work. But if I grab the apple, complete it, and right away it pretends to unlock a new quest. Well, you could see here where this would get kind of annoying and maybe could get jumbled up. You know, having to spawn a thing for every quest and for every agent. That would be, you know, kind of annoying. And if we want to remove that, that's where we create this custom event class. So this would be with the custom listenable and we'll just subscribe to the event and then once this event gets fired, we'll come down here and we'll call this function and we'll unlock the quest. So let's take a look at our custom event class named custom listenable. So you see we have a waitable and subscribable in our comments, but we don't have it up here maybe letting the compiler know we're inheriting from those classes. Well, that's because if you do end up inheriting from subscribable, especially um, it will not allow you to write a subscribe function that works this way. Um, for whatever reason, the compiler will say it's not implemented yet. So you'll notice, like I said, we don't have subscribable and awaitable up there, um, but we're basically inheriting from those interfaces and we are implementing classes that would be like overriding those interfaces, but instead you can see there's no override here on await or subscribe, it's just public. So for a waitable, all we need to do is have an await function. And to make it work, we need to use the event class that Epic has, and we're gonna have the type agent for this case. And basically, whenever somebody calls await on our listenable, it will call event.await. So it's just a little masking. And then for subscribable, you notice we have to have two of these variables. One keeps track of the um, ID for the current callback function that we're subscribing to. So remember, when we're calling subscribe, we pass it, you know, the function that it wants to call once the event happens. So that's what we're storing here in subbed functions. We are having to pass the cancelable. Remember, we need to be able to subscribe and then unsubscribe. So we need to create um, something that is cancelable and that's our removable function class. We'll take a look at that in a second. But basically we create the removable custom function um, and then we add it to our sub functions. We increment the subbed ID and then return it in our subscribe function so that if another class wants to cancel it later, they can. And then lastly, we have signal. Basically this will be what you call in your class that has the event to let all the other things that are listening to it know. So we'll alert our event that we have uh, privately in this class that will set a chain reaction because it will, um, this event.await will 
be notified and it will succeed and stop suspending. And then everything that was waiting on this 08 will now subsequently not be uh, suspended any longer. And then, yeah, we get our subs to function, removable function, dot function, and we pass, this is the callback, and then we pass the perimeter that we pass in our signal. So I think it's time we look at removable custom function to see what's going on under that. So you see we have the callback, uh, the name of it is function, but you see it's just a function that takes an agent and is void. We have the ID, and then we have this remove me function, and this is where, um, this is the most difficult part of it. Basically, we're passing along a function that we want it to be want to be called when cancel is called, right? So when when we want to unsubscribe from this listenable, we'll call cancel, and then it will call remove me on itself, and then what remove me is, is if we, when we create um, the removable function, you'll see right here we define remove me as the remove callback. And that points to this function, which takes the removable custom function, and then it basically, this line, all it does is it checks all the IDs and then removes, it doesn't include the one that we're taking away. I should name this better. Um, to be more obvious, but we're basically just removing that function from sub functions. So then whenever signal is called again, it won't be notified. So that's custom listenable, but let's say that's not enough because it makes sense in a quest system. You know, we don't want to have like a callback function that's unique, you know, to every different quest. It'd be better if we could, let's say, pass an ID here. Let's say we have a quest ID and then we know what to do with that ID. So to do that, we'll need to change our custom listenable to account for that. So let me do that real quick. So you'll notice here, we just swapped out agent for the tuple of agent and int or tuple. Um, and then when we signal it, we have to pass along an agent and an integer value. And that's really where the superpower comes in from making custom events because now we can start passing along, you know, more information on these events. You can imagine if you had a quest system, you know, of 50 quests or whatever, and you know, there's branching paths or whatever, like complicated stuff you need to pass along. Well, you just need to, you know, create a custom listenable that passes along the data that's required. So here's just another example of something you could do in this case. This is from another project I have where I have a vehicle purchase listenable, you know, and it passes along this agent vehicle container class that just has the agent and the vehicle type and the vehicle type is an enum to a thing. So you can do so much with this. This basically unlocks a lot of creativity that you can have. And if you want to pass along, you know, if you want to make a wrapper class for buttons, that you know, when each button is pressed, it automatically calls a function that you know has the ID of what button was pressed and stuff like that. That is the stuff you can do with this uh, custom event system. So you can really um, do a lot of cool things with it, and it could clean up your code immensely. So that's going to be it for this episode of Verse Boost. If you guys liked it, you know what to do. Um, the code will be on my website in the link in the description. All right, thank you guys for watching. Peace.